Hello, my name is Ludmila Fesik. I'm a PhD student from Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics in Hanover, Germany. In this talk, I will discuss how to localize a long duration gravitational signal in time. An isolated spinning neutron star with non axisymmetric deformations or currents will produce a long duration gravitation wave, which we call the continuous gravitation wave. These waves are weak, but always emitted as long as the neutron star is deformed or the current exists. The wave is a quasi periodic with a slowly varying frequency as a function of the star's rotational frequency. The wave, due to non axisymmetric deformation, is expected to be of almost infinite duration. There are possible mechanisms which breaks the spin down of the pulsar. Some pulsar exhibit glitches, abrupt spin up in the rotation of a uh, pulsar. For instance, the young pulsars Vela and Krab. Of special interest is the fastest young pulsar Gero 537 in large Magellan cloud, which has systematic glitch behavior observed for 11 years by Rossi. If there is a glitch, the glitch breaks a continuous signal then one considers a transient continuous wave, which has long but not infinite duration, typically on the time scale between days to months. We consider a transient signal as a continuous wave signal, which is not always on in the data. Why the study of transient signals is important? Firstly, because the actual time parameters of a signal might be unknown from the electromagnetic observations. Even if the time of the glitches is precisely known, the after glitch relaxation period is usually unknown. To search for a transient signal of unknown duration, one can perform the much filtering search, search over different possible signal durations in the data with a corresponding template grid in the frequency. In the case of the detection statistics, based on the loudest candidate, the maximum PF value, and the analysis doesn't care about doesn't care about the physics of the signal. This approach can be modified. If we study the properties of a transient signal searched with a template grid in the frequency. Since the actual time parameters of a transient signal are unknown, we set up the template grid in the frequency of all the data. This grid is over resolved for any transient signal, which means there are more than one template with a small SNR reduction. <clears throat> one can estimate the middle time of a transient signal by making the analysis of the SNR reduction profile, which is a two-dimensional profile in frequency and the frequency derivative around the actual signal parameters. The SNR reduction profile will change its origin if there is a time mismatch between the reference time of a search and the middle time of a signal. We find the slope of the ellipsoid's main axis from which we count the time mismatch to estimate the actual middle time of a transient signal. Recovery of a transient signal profile at the estimated middle time allows to localize the frequency frequency derivative range for the post following searches. Let's repeat that we have performed an initial search over all the data with an appropriate template grid. From the initial search over all data, we keep top candidates for full inspection. From this search, we have estimated the middle time of a transient signal's candidate. We estimate the frequency band around the signal's frequency parameters. With the estimated middle time and the frequency bands of a signal candidate, we are able to apply transient searches to localize signal in time. So to estimate the start and the end time of a transient signal in the data. We set up the search durations such to get equal mismatch in the frequency and the time for any transient signal. The transient searches have a common reference time equals the estimated middle time of a candidate. The best statistical result is expected from the maximum overlap between a transient search and the actual signal duration. Let's summarize the results of the SNR recovery from our searches for different signal fraction in the data, which we call kappa. Kappa is a, a fraction between the signal duration and the data duration. The top plot shows the recovered SNR normalized by the SNR of a transient signal initially recovered in the data, and hence the transient SNR gain, which shows how much one can improve the results by applying the transient searches. The black curve represents the expected maximum gain. In the bottom plot, the maximum recovered SNR is normalized by the actual signal SNR and shows the signal SNR loss, which is limited by the SNR recovered in all the data, given by the blue dashed line in the bottom plot. We show the mean and the standard deviation of the SNR loss. 
Due to uncertainties in the middle time estimation, we have the maximum mean SNR loss for a pretty long transient with kappa about uh, 65, 0.65. Uh, and the maximum mean SNR loss is about 20%. Let us summarize. We study the possibility to search for transient signal when the start time and the duration of the signal are unknown. The basic method is a matched filtering transient search, which is a template search with a variety of waveforms in frequency range over different combinations of time spans and the start times. The new search pipeline that we proposed after considering the properties of a transient signal in an old time search focuses a post following transient searches around the estimated middle time for every candidate from an initial search. We plan to publish the paper based on this work soon. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please contact us.